Everybody, it's Brian, and welcome to the ninth Yi2 tutorial. We're going to go in here, and in our previous tutorial, we did a one-for-one -one relationship. Now we're going to work with multiple rows, or multiple models, if you will. So we're going to go into our little test function here, and we're going to say pets. Whoops, that's embarrassing. All right, and whenever I do where, I always kind of like instinctively do this, just so I know that I want to work with it in a special format. All right, and then we can go name equal, and we're gonna give it a variable called name. And then, damn you, NetBeans, why have you betrayed me? There we go. Now this right here will return one item. If we want to return all of them, we would have to say all. Now if we want to limit the number of returns, we would say, well, limit. And then let's say two. This is called, I think it's called function chaining, where you have an object and then you just chain one function after another. So we're doing find, where, limit, all. And that's kind of how that works. So we're going to say if is set and let's say ye. it's like winter time here in Michigan and well it's winter time everywhere but in Michigan it's very dry and very it was very cold but now it's just very dry my like my knuckles are all chapped so it kind of hurts to type We're going to say number of dogs found. That was uh, kind of embarrassing. Number of pets, all right. I've been playing XCOM lately, so now I'm like my brain is stuck in XCOM mode. It's like a strategy game, and it's actually very challenging. Warming, wow. Warning. Maybe I need a typing game. All right, so. No dogs found. We're just doing a little bit of defensive programming here. So if you, if you go to lunch and somebody comes in and wipes out the whole database, you're not scratching your head wondering why your code isn't working. All right. So we're just saying, you know, number of dogs found. And we're just going to test this little theory that this does indeed limit it to two. And let's do this. And number of dogs found two. So that is very simply how you would do that. Let's go back in here. Let's get rid of this limit because we want to work with all of them here. And we're going to say, hmm, for each. I love for each. I remember we're in languages before for each existed, and it was just such a pain. Every time you wanted to do a loop, you had to do for i equal int as number of blah, blah, blah. All right, so we're going to get the individual items here, and we're just going to say, ye info I'm going to say the primary key of each one remember the primary key is the record identifier so we know which one we're actually looking at here let's just print this bad boy out uh oh Undefined variable pet. Hmm. I have made a boo boo. There we go. All right, let's go to our log, and sure enough, there is three dogs found. Thought we had more than three in there. We do have more than three. <laughs> oh, yes. I have misspelled a few. Hmm, my spelling skills are much be, to be desired here. So if we just go back. All right, there we go. Now we've got five dogs. Shoom. So we've got Sparky 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So what we want to do is we want to actually rename these things. And I kind of want to show you in the log how this works rather than printing it out in the web page so you can see exactly why logging is important and how this is really working under the hood. All right, so we're going to take each one of these and we're going to say... Uh, 
Sparky. For IntelliSense, it takes forever sometimes. So what we're really going to do is we're just going to validate that thing and then save it if it validates. And you know we should probably say else just in case something boo boo's out there. big ominous error message here and we will go back out here and go back which it runs the script and when we look we can see how number of dogs found sparky 11 update sparky 12 update so we're doing an update on each and individual one so that is kind of how ye executes this under the hood now you can do like an update all or something like that but I kind of wanted to show you this is a very um, I wouldn't even call it processor intensive, communication intensive between the app and the database because you're doing all of these one after another. And when we go out to our database here, you'll see they're now renamed. So what happens if we just we hate Sparky and we want Sparky to go away? I'm a cat person, not a dog person personally, but uh, I would never you know condone animal abuse at all, but we just want Sparky to go bye bye. Well, we can kind of take this same format here, and we can say pets delete all. And you notice how IntelliSense finally popped up. You've got delete all, and then delete all condition, and then condition params. Now, what are these? Well, condition is just your SQL. So, like you could say name equal, and then Sparky where that's really not the best way to do it. I prefer doing it like this, where name like or whatever, or name equal, and then the variable. And you know, the same thing that we really essentially have here. And that would delete anything with the name of Sparky. Or you could, if you just want to live fast and dangerous here, you could just delete all, which is exactly what we're going to do for this tutorial. And boom, delete from pets. So it just wiped it right out. So if we go to our database here, Sparky, go bye bye. All right, well, that's all for this tutorial. I hope you found this educational and entertaining. And, uh, as always, check out my new YouTube channel. I got tons of other videos on different programming languages either. And voidrooms.com is my main website. Um, go ahead and go to contact and then be sure to join the Voidrooms Facebook group. We got like almost 400 people in there with multiple languages. So if you have any questions or ideas, just bounce it off those guys and they can, honestly, I get an answer within about 10 minutes. So it's actually kind of cool. I'm pretty psyched up. Talk to you later. Bye.